Welcome back to the Bowtie Goat YouTube channel where if you try hard enough, you can be the next DECA Goat. Today, I have three tips that will help elevate both your role play and written event presentation game so you can do so well this competition season. If you wanna know the inside secrets, stay tuned. So if you've not studied or prepared at all for the written event presentation or the role play, please take a look at those videos which I link out above. However, if you have, these tips are things I've been kicking around in my head for the last year and I'm excited to share them with you so you can really elevate your game. So let's start with tip number one. So I am a really big baseball fan and I've been to hundreds of baseball games in person. And if you've ever been to a baseball game and you pay attention to what happens as a batter walks up to the plate, you notice that the batter has chosen some walk up music and they've got a bit of a swagger and they've got a routine of everything they're going to do prior to seeing that first pitch. You should have a similar walk up approach to see your deck a judge. And if you're not a baseball fan, then think about the way Taylor Swift or Beyonce would walk on stage. They don't just come on and be all lazy. They're come on and excited and ready to perform. You have to walk in with the same sort of swagger that a professional would approach their everyday job. I got one of these tips from one of the books I read this year by Yuri Levine, who is a co-founder of Waze. And he has spent a lot of time with venture capital. And in those VC meetings, he asked a lot of investors how they know whether or not they're going to invest in a particular new startup. And a lot of investors said, you can tell within the first 60 seconds of what the business person is going to say, whether or not you should invest. And it's all about that confidence. So you really have to hone that poise and that confidence walking in to see a judge for a role play or a written event presentation, because from the second they see you, they've already started making assumptions. It's not the first thing that you say to the judge, it's the first time that the judge sees you that's when your role play or your presentation really begins. So how do we practice this? This is something that you can do hundreds of times before your first role play. I'm a classroom teacher. We happen to be in my classroom today. I notice every time a student walks through my door, I see their face. I know whether they're smiling. I know generally their disposition and I know whether they're having a good day or not. So here's what I say to you. Try to find one teacher that you feel comfortable doing this with and don't even tell them. Just know that this is a teacher you're going to experiment with and try walking into their classroom every day like you're walking into that first role play or that first written event presentation. And walk in, shoulders back, head up, smile, look at your teacher. Now you don't have to shake their hand, that might be a little bit overdone, but look at your teacher, smile and say hello and carry that confidence down to where you sit down. If you make that conscious effort to practice that walk up, that routine, with a couple of teachers throughout the school year, by the time you get to your first role play, it'll be muscle memory. You'll just click right in and you will approach the judge with a confidence and with a swagger and with a attitude about being ready to go that you've practiced again and again each day. That brings us to tip number two. When I was a kid, my brother and my sister and I would be sitting in the other room watching TV and my parents would be cleaning up things in the kitchen and having their evening conversations and talking about how their day went. And I'd be watching TV and I wouldn't really be paying attention to what my mom and dad were saying, but every now and then they'd say my name is Justin. And all of a sudden my mind would snap back into whatever they were talking about because I wanted to know why they said my name. So for tip number two, I want you to think about knowing your judge. So again, think about any time that you would really go up to meet somebody and you'd shake their hand and you'd say your name. Hi, I'm Justin. And if they don't say their name back to you, you would probably say, oh, so what's your name? Right, it's something that I tell my kids to do when we're at the park and they wanna meet a new friend. They go up and say their name and the friend says their name back. If your judge doesn't say his or her name at the start of your role play, follow up with, hi, I'm Justin. Oh, I didn't get your name. And if you get the judge to say his or her name at the start of your role play, then I want you to use that person's name three times throughout the role play. Once in the beginning, once in the middle, and very definitely when you thank them at the end. Why? A judge has spent hours looking at multiple people give probably very competent role plays. Just like my parents' conversation from the other room, the second you say the judge's name, they click back in. They hear you again, they refocus. And it also makes somebody feel really good when the person they're talking to says their name repeatedly. That's something I picked up when I read Influences Your Superpower, another great book about how to approach people. But if you do that a couple of times throughout your role play, not only does it make the judge feel welcomed, 
but it also helps you snap them back into the role play. So how do you practice this in an everyday setting? Anytime that you go to check out at the grocery store, at the convenience store, for us on the East Coast at the Wawa, all those folks have a name tag on. Smile at that person and talk to them by their name. Get to know them. If you go out to the restaurant and you've got a server for the full hour or an hour and a half that you're there, every time the waiter or waitress comes back to your table, use their name in conversation. It's really important and it makes a whole lot of difference in how that person feels about you and the relationship that you develop over time. If you can practice this again several dozen times before you get to your first role play and then just remember to ask the judge his or her name at the start of the role play, it will be like second nature, but it could really make the difference between maybe making it to the final stage and definitely winning a trophy in DACA. And that brings us to tip number three. Now, this one is uniquely for folks doing a role play. And again, I'm going to link specifically to the timestamp where I've made this suggestion in my role play tips video. But as you're doing your role play prep, you want to think about writing down some very key pieces of information about how to deliver your role play. In my role play tips video, I say that you should have something to hand the judge at the end, like kids like making business cards or graphs that demonstrate a certain point. If nothing else, because sometimes you don't have any of that time to create something creative, you could write your notes in a creative way that really demonstrate or really show off a unique perspective to your judge. Over the past year, I've been saying to my students, at the end of the meeting when you thank the judge, ask if you can send them an email follow-up to schedule your next meeting. So I've been thinking about that tip, and I wanted to put together, I did this in like 10 seconds, and I'll put this on the side screen next to me. But if you just take the time and set up your notes that you're taking for your role play, like it looks like an email printout. What's fantastic about that is at the top you put who it's to, the judge, and you put the role of the individual and who it's from, and that's where you put your name. So the judge has those two things immediately. And then in the subject line, I would save that to do last or next to last, you want to put something creative, something eye-catching that's going to make the judge remember your role play. So it might be a slogan or a proposal that you want the judge to definitely remember. Put those three things at the top, and then all you do is, you know, your email follow-up is going to be like you're emailing just the notes about the meeting and then setting the next meeting. So the notes about the meeting are just organized the way you present your performance indicators with a couple of notes about them. So it's not going to look entirely phony to hand your notes to the judge and say, I'd like to follow up by email about our next meeting. And you have all of those things that are there. If I really wanted to stand out, I would save room. I would save room at the top for writing your solution or your particular way that you're going to address this role play that's unique. So maybe write out a sentence or two about what makes your piece unique. And then if you have additional time, I know a lot of people like to do like that business card thing at the bottom, but that's really just your email signature. So you could draw a logo for the company and you could have your name and again, a cool slogan as the subject line of the email. Again, you could really do that over two pages, but if you're going to do something to hand to the judge anyway, I would make it a purposeful and thoughtful inclusion so that your judge has something that sets you apart from the competitors. So there you've got it, my top three tips for helping you compete at DECA this year. I am very excited to share these tips with you, and I can't wait to hear about the success that you have. I can't wait to see you in ICDC at Anaheim, and best of luck this year on your DECA success journey.